Hi everyone. In the previous video, we start to look into what geometry really is. The reason is that it was through geometrical justifications that irrational numbers were introduced into mathematics and also became considered numbers in the end. As we dug into it, however, we found that because geometric figures consist of sizeless points, irrational numbers arise as the length of almost all line segments. The thing is that if a point has no size, then it literally doesn't exist. So the existence of sizeless points is in itself a contradiction and they are definitely fictional objects. Evidently, all geometric figures which consist of these fictional sizeless points are also fictional. So we reach the conclusion that the whole geometry itself is in a sense fictional. Not only that, but the mathematicians put more fictional elements into geometry. More specifically, they didn't only think that geometric figures consist of sizeless points, but they also thought that these sizeless points are continuously connected to each other without any gaps. This also applies to the number line, where every point on it corresponds to a rational number or an irrational number. This straight line is not only made up of sizeless points, but all points on this line are continuously connected to each other without any gaps. This is a complete fantasy, but in modern mathematics, this fantasy is called the geometric continuum. Based on this concept of geometric continuum, in the late 19th century, Cantor and Dedekind defined a new number system that consists of rational and irrational numbers. In this system, rational and irrational numbers were newly defined or given a new identity in such a way that they together became an arithmetic continuum corresponding to the fantasied geometric continuum. This new system is called the real number system or the system of real numbers and the newly defined rational and irrational numbers are called real numbers. Moreover, in this way, rational numbers and irrational numbers are completely unified. Then, what is the definition of the real numbers? In this video, we are going to find it out. First off, I need to tell you that even though Cantor and Dedekind define the real numbers, they define them in their own way. By Cantor's definition, real numbers are defined as equivalence classes of cosy sequences, and by Dedekind's definition, real numbers are defined as Dedekind cuts. At this moment, you might wonder how there can be two different definitions of the same real numbers, but I should say that those two definitions are equivalent to each other in some mathematical sense. To explain what it means, I'm going to take natural numbers as an example. For example, with natural numbers, there are many equivalent ways to express them. Two of the typical ways are the decimal system and the binary system. As you already know, we humans use the decimal system where 10 symbols from 0 to 9 are used to express natural numbers, whereas computers use the binary system where only two symbols, 0 and 1, are used. Even though the two systems are different, each natural number in the decimal system has its own counterpart in the binary system and vice versa. For example, 3 in the decimal system corresponds to 1 1 in the binary system. 9 in the decimal system corresponds to a 1 double O 1 in the binary system. Also, 58 in the decimal system corresponds to a triple 1 O 1 O in the binary system. So, the two systems just express the same natural numbers in their own way. Likewise, the two definitions of the real numbers, which were given by Cantor and Dedekind, are equivalent in some mathematical sense. So, it is perfectly fine to go with one of them when it comes to the definition of the real numbers. 
but the thing is that both definitions sound quite technical. Actually, to understand them clearly, you will need some college level of knowledge. Luckily enough, however, we have another simpler but equivalent definition of the real numbers, which is infinite decimal representations. Therefore, from now on, we'll use infinite decimal representations for the definition of the real numbers. Then, what are infinite decimal representations? Infinite decimal representations, or just simply infinite decimals, are as their name indicates, decimals that have infinitely many digits that follow the decimal point. As you can see, the irrational number, the square root of 2, is expressed like this in the form of infinite decimal representation. Then, you might think that you can approximate it with finite decimals such as 1.4, 1.41, 1.414, 1.414, 1.414, 1.4142, and so on. However, you should note that infinite decimal representations are completely different from finite decimals in that they literally involve infinity. Many of you would already know that pi is expressed as 3.141592 and so on and forth. This doesn't only apply to irrational numbers, but also applies to all rational numbers. For example, in the real number system, 1 is expressed as 0.9999999 and so on and forth. And 1 over 7 is expressed as 0.142857142857 and so on and forth. The only difference between rational numbers and irrational numbers in the form of infinite decimal representation is that rational numbers contain a group of digits that repeat endlessly in their representation, while irrational numbers do not. So these infinite decimal representations are the new definition or the new identity of rational and irrational numbers. Now, to every point on this geometry continuum corresponds an infinite decimal representation. At this point, however, we have to ask an important question, that is, are these infinite decimal representations really acceptable? As you can see, an infinite decimal representation literally involves infinity. More specifically, it is a collection of infinitely many entities. Is there something in reality that corresponds to this kind of concept? For example, in reality, there can be a bag with 5 balls in it. And there can be a bag with 30 balls in it. But can there be a bag that contains infinitely many balls in it? Definitely no. Actually, a bag with infinitely many balls would appear in a fantasy like Santa and his reindeer. In this regard, the concept of infinite decimal representations is also a complete fantasy. You might wonder if the other two definitions of the real numbers presented by Cantor and Dedekind involve infinity too. Considering all the definitions of real numbers are equivalent, the answer is definitely yes. But I will quote the following remark. Joanna E. Snow says, these are the theories of Richard Dedekind, Gerald Cantor. Each mathematician defined a real number as an infinite set of rational numbers which possessed a given property. Actually, an infinite set is a typical example of a collection of infinitely many entities in mathematics. For example, the set of natural numbers is one of them. So from now on, whenever you hear the word a real number, you can think of bag with infinitely many balls in it. Then, you might also wonder how these kinds of objects that involve infinity, which would appear in a fantasy world, can arise in mathematics. However, if you think about where the real numbers originated, you could make sense of it. As I said earlier in this video, the real numbers originated from the fantasied geometric continuum, more specifically, 
They are just the result of arithmetizing the geometric continuum of points on a line, where not only do the points have no size, but they're also continuously connected to each other without any gaps. Since this concept itself is a complete fantasy, the real numbers which originated from it are necessarily a fantasy. It's just that one fantasy gives rise to another fantasy. The philosopher of mathematics Jose Ferreiro says, all the classical conceptions of the real numbers, from Stevin and Descartes to Dedekind and Cantor, bear the mark of previous geometrical conceptions and inherit, or one should say, exacerbate their hypothetical nature. The thing is that, as you have heard, these kinds of objects that involve infinity are rather called real numbers. Actually, considering the fact that they are a complete fantasy, it feels like they should have been called imaginary numbers or fictional numbers. But interestingly enough, they are called real numbers. Then, we are finally led to the following question. Why are they called real numbers? As a matter of fact, Answering this question is a key to understanding why our modern mathematics is a religion. So in the next video, we are going to find it out. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching today's video.